SpaceX and NASA are going to face a wide variety of engineering challenges in getting Starship and NASA astronauts down to the surface of the moon for the Artemis 3 mission, especially if they want to try to pull that off by 2026. But a recent discovery made by, of all people, the Chinese National Space Agency has eliminated potentially one of the most extreme challenges that SpaceX faces. And if this discovery is confirmed, it will change everything that NASA intends to do when it comes to establishing a permanent presence on the moon. That is, it will change things very much for the better. Good afternoon and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. As you can see, I have arrived in Shetland. This is actually Lerwick, and I took this footage from a ferry that I had ridden for the last 12 hours in order to get to my destination. I actually had to take two more ferries to get where I am now at the Saxaford Spaceport, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys' help. I would like to quickly thank some more of you that made all of this possible. Raymond Impostato, Ron Schumacher, Brent Smithline, Skerdjald Serga, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing a lot of these, Christian Chamberlain, Nicholas Lawrenson, Thorsten Zelmer, Corey Little, Paul Henry, Proflit Paragliding, Hugh Parker, Scott Gallup, Robert Stuck, Pat Lopez, Old Town Tours in Albuquerque, Software Opopsis, Jacob Dykes, Joe Sullivan, Robert Little, Peter Buletza, Chris Mool, Michael White, Mary Sprouse, Ron Griffiths, William Cooper, Jerome Perkins, Sean Jenish, Edward Eakin, Brian Smith, and Sage Cactus Real Estate. And there are still more. So instead of taking up this entire video thanking all of you folks, I'd just like to say thanks so much to all of those folks who have contributed to my journey to South Carolina and back and then finally up here. Without your help, none of this would have been possible. Let's get on to the topic at hand. So one of the biggest challenges that Starship is going to face, perhaps the biggest challenge of all that Starship will face when it comes to going to the moon, is a challenge that it's it's not going to face when it goes to Mars. And that is in the field of in situ resource utilization or ISRU. As most of us probably know, Starship runs off of Methalox. And Methalox, as far as we know about the moon, or at least from what we thought we knew about the moon, was going to be practically impossible to manufacture there. There's no methane on the moon. Methane, of course, usually only coming about as a result of biological activity, although volcanic activity can sometimes make it occur as well. But from all of the samples that the Apollo missions brought back, there was no methane. And this, by the way, is going to at least theoretically give the Blue Origin Blue Moon Lander a clear advantage because its engines run off of hydrogen and oxygen. And if there are billions of tons of water ice at the south pole of the moon, as we suspect that there is, then it should be a lot easier to manufacture fuel for the Blue Moon than it would be for Starship. But there's another way to create methane, and that is through the catalytic reduction of CO2, something called the Sabatier reaction. However, here's another problem. Again, from all of the hundreds of kilograms of moon rocks that the Apollo astronauts brought back, there was precious little carbon. So little that the Sabatier reaction would be virtually impossible to carry out. Therefore, in situ resource utilization, at least when it comes to manufacturing methalox looks practically impossible on the moon, meaning that Starship is going to have to bring all of the fuel for all of its operations on the moon with it, or perhaps mine it on asteroids and bring the carbon that way. Otherwise, it won't be able to work, at least not with Raptor engines. However, a recent discovery made by China 
at the south pole of the moon, actually at the far side of the moon in the southern region, well, things seem to be different chemically. And we know this because of a recent sample return mission that China carried out flawlessly. At this point, China is beginning to look like a shoe-in for becoming the first nation to return to the moon after over 50 years. They have carried out so many missions now with so few problems, really to perfection, that it's just beginning to look like China can't mess anything up when it comes to the moon. This is the second successful sample return mission that China has carried out, again with no problems problems and they have made an amazing discovery. According to the South China Morning Post, quote, the prevalent giant impact theory, that is to say the theory of the moon's creation, has been strongly supported by the notion of a carbon depleted moon derived from the early analysis of Apollo samples. However, a team led by researchers from Jilin University just published a paper detailing their findings and they have confirmed what appears to be a carbon capture process on the moon, leading to the gradual accumulation of indigenous carbon. And this discovery may reinvent the understanding of chemical components and the history of the moon. That, of course, is very important, but if carbon is actually present on the moon in large amounts, that will change everything for Starship. Now, the team also referenced a recent study from Japan that challenged the giant impact theory by demonstrating carbon ion emission fluxes across the lunar surface, suggesting the presence of indigenous carbon. And this particular study seems to confirm the presence of that carbon actually being present in the form of graphene. Now, the structure of the graphene indicates that it was formed through high temperature processes resulting from volcanic eruptions, which might have allowed iron-bearing lunar soil to interact with carbon-containing gas molecules in solar winds, leading to mineral catalysis. And by the way, this discovery may also allow for a more effective manufacture of graphene in the future. Why is that important? Well, graphene was only discovered about 20 years ago, and it turns out that it is one of the most useful substances ever discovered, at least potentially, because it is extremely lightweight, but at the same time, very resilient. One of the most incredible applications that this substance might be used for is building a space elevator. Let me explain why. A single crystal graphene cable that one would use in order to make a space elevator possible, 100,000 kilometers long, in other words, a cable long enough to reach one third of the way from the Earth to the moon with a 20 millimeter core, a thousand millimeters wide, so very, very thick, certainly capable of handling a space elevator car like the one you're looking at right now, would weigh 77 kilograms. That's less than 170 pounds absolutely amazing. So really, if we find this substance in vast quantities on the moon, it could have a lot more applications than just making methyl ox for Starship. So yeah, this is the first of probably many discoveries about the moon's composition that we have yet to make. And one of the biggest reasons that we still find out all of these new things about the moon is because the Apollo missions were so restricted in where they could set down. They had to set down in daylight, therefore always on the side of the moon that faces us. And they also had to be in equatorial locations. The Apollo landers didn't have enough fuel Fuel to take them to a polar location on the moon and get back home safely. Whereas the way the lunar gateway is set up with its rectilinear halo orbit, it will be able to dispatch landers down to the lunar south pole quite easily. And as we have seen, both the far side of the moon and the lunar south pole are drastically different composition-wise. As a matter of fact, we know that there is a vast 
vast amount of metallic resources at the lunar south pole, which no doubt China has incredible interest in, especially the rare metals and rare minerals that are there, something that China already has a near monopoly on, it's a monopoly they would like to maintain, and that's something they will definitely be able to do if they establish a permanent presence on the moon first. But this recent discovery, ironically enough, benefits the United States' plans for landing on the moon more so than it does China, because it's going to allow, at least in theory, Starship to utilize ISRU fuel on the moon, which will reduce the amount of fuel that needs to be brought to the moon in the first place, and will also allow the same Starship to be used for multiple missions, allowing vast amounts of payload, personnel, etc. to eventually be put on the surface of the moon. So an exciting discovery, one that benefits perhaps everybody on the planet, but one that definitely benefits a future Artemis 3 mission. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please don't forget to support this channel if you like, and just check out the description for various ways to do that. And I will continue to bring you the latest news from up here in Saxivord. We have some tests, some static fires, and of course, a launch from Rocket Factory Augsburg happening very soon. Can't wait to bring all of that to you. And until next time, stay angry about space.